Let's turn uh, Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Jeremiah 6 verse 16. Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Amen. May the Lord bless all of us through this old path. What is the old path? None other than the way of salvation through Jesus Christ. If we walk therein and we shall find rest for our souls, we'll have everlasting life. But so many people reject this old path, but they make a new way another way but there is no rest therein so this is rebellion against God so always remember the old faith in the Bible it will give us eternal life and the last of our souls Okay, let's see the fundamentals. Uh, the, there was a book the, named The Fundamentals of Testimony to the Truth. Uh, the word fundamentalism is really self-explanatory. In American church history, the term fundamental came from the book fundamentals or the fundamentals or testimony to the truth. Uh, it was edited by A.C. Dixon and later by Luben Archer Torre. It is a set of 90 essays in 12 volumes, very small book, 12 volumes, uh, published from 1910 to 1915 by the Bible Institute of Los Angeles. Uh, today, this Bible Institute of Los Angeles uh, became Biola University. Uh, well-known pastor, uh, uh, M.G. Clarence Dixon, he was a well-known pastor, Bible expositor, and evangelist popular in the late 19th century and early 20th century. With uh, Ruben uh, Torre, he helped edit the influential journal, The Fund Fundamentals, which helped give fundamentalist Christianity its name. Uh, we can see here also Luben Archer Torre. Okay? Uh, the essays were designed to affirm orthodox Protestant beliefs especially those of the Reformed tradition and defend against ideas deemed uh, inimical to them. They are widely uh, considered to be the foundation of modern Christian fundamentalism. Uh, at that time, uh, late 19th century and uh, the early 20th century, uh, there was an attack from liberalism, modernism. So some conservative uh, pastors, they want to defend uh, the biblical fundamentalism. So they uh, made a journal and they published the book very sound and fundamental, very conservative essays, 90 essays. 
Uh, the essays were originally uh, financed by uh, Lehman Stewart in 1909 to set out what they believed to be the fundamentals of Christian faith. Uh, these were to be sent free to ministers, missionary Sunday school, uh, superintendents, and other active in Christian ministry. So one businessman, he donated the money for this book, so it was uh, spread uh, by free of charge. Uh, Lehman Stewart, he was a U.S. businessman and co-founder of the Bible Institute, a uh, co-founder of the Bible Institute of Los Angeles, uh, now known as Biola University. He and his brother Milton uh, funded the fundamentals of uh, 12 volumes uh, publican that became a classic defense of the Christian faith and was the foundation of the fundamentalist Christian movement. So this book uh, was very uh, precious. Uh, I don't know, in the library we can find this book. Uh, if we don't have later, I will give this book okay, to the library. You can find and you can read. I bought this book to write down my dissertation. The volumes defended Orthodox Protestant beliefs and attacked higher criticism, uh, liberal theology, or even Catholicism, socialism, modern philosophy, atheism, Christian science, Mormonism, Millennial, millennial Dawn, uh, this is early term for a particular Christian Bible student movement, which mostly later became the Jehovah's Witness uh, denomination, and spiritualism and evolutionism. All the wrong theory, wrong doctrine, heretical thought, uh, these fundamentals attacks this kind of all the wrong thought. The fundamentalist, the name of fundamentalist, uh, Curtis L. Lewis, he was the uh, editor of the Baptist Watchman Examiner. Uh, he used the term fundamentalist in the magazines July 1st, 1920 issue to refer to separation, separationists who rejected liberalism and embraced evangelical teachings. This is the fundamentalist. Uh, later, it, it was inevitable uh, to escape the fight against the liberalism because the liberalists and modernists they attacked all the fundamental doctrines in the Bible so uh, the fundamentalists to defend the biblical truth they were fighting against uh, the attacks of modernists it's inevitable okay? So we say once more, via antiqua and via moderna. Modernism also explains itself. It is defined as pertaining to all presenting the modern character or quality of thought, expression, style of workmanship, etc. And as a tendency toward freedom of thought and the uh, acceptance of the result of modern criticism and research in religious matters. This is the modernism free from freedom of thought. Uh, actually, real freedom comes from the Bible. Actually, we are not free uh, from the fall of Adam, our first father, 
uh, we don't have any freedom of will because we became the slave of sin from our birth. We don't have any freedom. We just slave of the sin. If we want to have real freedom, we must believe in Jesus Christ and by the helping of the Holy Spirit, we must obey our will to the law of God. Then we'll have the real freedom from sin. But the uh, modernist, uh, they never believe the human being has the sin. They do not believe the sin. So they said we are always free from every law every limitations. So they do not believe the law of God in the Bible. So they said we had the freedom, real freedom, from the any thought, even the from the Bible. So they had uh, some freedom to over the lines, okay? We have uh, some boundaries, okay? This is, we are learning systematic theology and we are learning the church history. Why? Because we want to know the boundary of our freedom, okay? If we uh, cross over this line, we know this is sin. But the liberalist has no the boundary in thinking also in their activities. So for liberalists, for modernists, even though homosexuals is no problem for them, even though Bible said this is a very, very terrible sin, but they said, oh no, we are not believing in the Bible is not, it, the Bible is God's word. This is only, it has the limitation by culture and by time. So we have to re-explain um, or rethink all the biblical record according to the modern day's thinking and modern day's customs. So no problem for us. This is a liberals. Even they was thinking about the religious matter. Uh, the traditional way, we have only one way to salvation. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. The life, except Jesus, no man can before God. This is the biblical truth. Only one, we have only one way, only one truth, only one life to God. This is Jesus Christ. But they said, oh no, 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 it's wrong, it's wrong. Because every religion has the, their own salvation way. Except Jesus, of course, we can go to God. Of course, this God's name is all different, okay? The Muslim said Allah, Christian said God, and the Buddhist said this is... How can I pronounce it? Buddha, eh? All these kind of things. But so we have to discuss. And we discuss, we must have the a dialogue to understand each other. If you evangelize someone, this is very, very unpolite and very rude to the other religion. So don't evangelize anyone, okay? So WCC, the WCC, World Council of Church, has no department of mission, but they had department of dialogue for this reason. Is it true? If you 
uh, Bible believing Christians, you, mu you must uh, concern about all the record in the Bible. Bible always says there is only one way to everlasting life. But you are modernist, and you don't care all the word in the Bible, and you say uh, doesn't matter. Eh? This is modernized thinking. The word modern is set over against what is concerned, archaic or antiquated. It means they hate the old way, old path. They always want to have a new way, new path. Okay? This is called via antiqua versus via moderna. They always walking uh, in via moderna, the way of modern. Okay? This is the the concept and mentality of modernist. Some defines fundamentalism as the opposite of liberalism and the fundamentalists as those who regard the scripture as the inspired and indeed the infallible and in inerrant word of God. This is our position. So we believe in that the Bible is none other than God's word, inspired and infallible and inerrant word of God. The fundamentalists believe on the traditional doctrines of the Holy Trinity and the deity of Christ and normally assert as matter of uh, divine revelation, divine revelation, some substitutionary doctrine of the atonement. We are believing all these kind of fundamental doctrines. Why I mention this kind of doctrine? Because in the Bible, the whole council of Bible, we can have a lot of precious doctrines. But the fundamentalists, they focus on some several doctrines. Why? Because the modernist, the liberally, they attack some particular fundamental doctrine in the Bible. So depend, to depend these fundamental doctrines, the fundamentalists, they focus on some particular doctrines. The authority of the Bible, authority of Trinity, deity of Christ, this kind of all fundamental doctrines. The opponent of fundamentalism used the word liberalism and liberal Christianity to describe themselves. Is it true? Liberal Christianity? They never believe in the fundamental doctrines in the Bible. Can they be Christian? I do not agree with the uh, liberal Christianity. This is just wordplay, lip service. They are not believing in Jesus Christ. They are not believing in all the fundamental doctrine in the Bible. And they can, how they can say, I am a Christian. I do not believe that. I cannot agree with them. They do not believe in Jesus Christ. They do not believe in the Trinity. They do not believe in the deity of Christ. The, in church history, we can call them heretic. How can they say, I am a Christian? How about the Jehovah's Witness? Are they Christian? They deny the Trinity. How about the Arius? The heretic for Trinity, ancient heretic. You know, the, the controversy uh, against the Arianism, we call this Iota controversy. 
Do you know what is the iota, the Greek letter? The small i. This is iota controversy. Why? Because the Arius, he said Christ has uh, hetero, heterousios. What is heterousios? Heterousia, heterousios. This is a different substance. But the uh, Adonisius, he said Christ has the same substance with God. It's a uh, homoousios. Homoousios. Do you know what is homo? Homo is the same. But uh, another man, Eusebius, he want to compromise. So he said uh, Christ has the Homo eusius. What is homo is only one more letter, iota. Homo eusius. This is not exactly 100% same substance with God, but this is likely, almost, but not 100%. So church, reject the homo eusius and heterousius church uh, declared only one position the homo eusius same substance this is the only biblical doctrines we call this so uh, iota controversy I, the heretics comes from very small things, but this small thing is very critical to the Christian faith. So all the church now know very well the Arianism is a very, very famous heretic, heresy, okay? Only one letter, Iota. But how about the liberalists? They deny all the fundamental doctrines. Virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Trinity. Deity of Christ. Even though they do not believe in that the Bible is God's word. Of course they say some part of the Bible is God's word. No miracles. No supernaturals. Even though God is God already retired. He never walked. How can you say they are Christians? So John Gresham Machen he said, this is the liberalism is not a Christianity. This is a totally different religion, another religion. So don't be Deceived by liberal Christianity. There is no liberal Christianity. Christianity is only one Christianity. The religion in the Bible. The religion from the Bible. The others, it's not Christianity. But we are deceived by them. By that. They said, uh, we have a church building, we are using the Bible, we have the rituals. Outwardly, 100% we are the Christianity. We have a pastor, we have a worship service. But we have to know the contents. We have to know the heart. Are they Christian? This liberal school has other labels of its own and particularly they or a section of them adopted the word modernism only in the 20th century as a denoting those who thought that the face of the Christian church as expressed in its creed and ritual was handicapped by retention of absolute 
of history. A uh, also absolute science and inadequate ethics. So they never, never focus on the sound doctrine in the Bible, but they said it has uh, some limitation by history and by science and by ethics. Eh? So this is liberals. Different from us. They deny all the fundamental doctrines. They are popularly referred to in many uh, quarters as the critics, and def definitely they prove themselves to be disciples of higher critic school and continuators of its tradition. So uh, they develop the criticism to criticize God's word. So they uh, examine the word of God in the Bible uh, according to their study and according to their thinking. They uh, took out some verses from the Bible and they uh, added some word in the Bible, they change a lot of the verse and words and letters in the Bible. We call this criticism. Why they are using the criticism? Because they want to dis destroy authority of the Bible. They said, so scholars, uh, they had uh, some authority to decide, put the word in the Bible or to take out the word from the Bible. So they said, uh, we have the higher authority over the Bible. Is it true? Now they made 28 editions, so called Nestle Alant 28 editions. They changed God's word 28 times. But it's the final version. They will change again someday. We call it 29 editions. There is no 100 perfect Bible. It will be changed by human beings, by scholars, by critics. Where is the authority of the Bible? So this the criticism is a very dangerous enemy of the Bible, God's word. So we have to defend uh, our Bible with the sound doctrine, verbal plenary inspiration. Uh, actually, the critics, they never believe in the uh, verbal plenary inspiration. If it is um, inspired by God, it must be preserved by God. But they said no preservation, so every word, change it so we have to know what is the original word from the Lord but nobody knows so we are studying very hard so we checked every the manuscripts so we have the authority to decide what what God's was is this is pride of sin so the bubble plenary preservation is very, very important doctrine to depend the authority of the Bible. No preservation, no inspiration. Modernism adjusting actively Christianity according to the categories of modern culture appeared as the as the 
enemy of Christianity. Now, the Muslim is not the enemy of Christianity. We have a very clear line. So, Muslims, uh, they cannot deceive us. But uh, modernism, in modernist, they are in the boundary of Christianity by themselves and they destroy all the precious things in the Bible, all the precious doctrines. They destroy all, destroy the salvation knowledge. They destroy the the authority of the Bible. Now they became the enemy of Christianity. Even they deny all the work of Jesus Christ. Even though death of Jesus Christ, they became the enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm very sad. With their lips, they said, ah, we are Christians, we are believers. But actually, they are not believers because they are not believing the fundamental doctrine in the Bible. Maybe they are deceived by someone. And they are deceiving someone. And they are Deceived by themselves. This is a human being. So we must always be humble before the word of God. Word of God says who we are. Are we Christians? See the Bible. Bible tells us. The modernist influence fundamentalists to attack the modernistic reinterpretation on Christian faith. The modernists, they want to reinterpret the Christian faith according to via moderna. So the fundamentalists must depend on the the old faith so they uh, it is the reaction against the modernism so fundamentally they were fighting against modernists why because modernists they attack the christianity itself attack the, all the fundamental doctrines the enemy comes with sword with guns to kill your family. What can you do? Or just, oh, I'm a good man, I'm a man of peace. Okay, kill all my family, even myself. Kill me. Can you do? No. Why the Singapore government has uh, the army to protect their own People, why? Even my country has uh, the army. What for? To defend our nation, protect our people from the enemies. We are fundamentalists. We are the soldier of Christ. What kind of soldier? All the faithful doctrines, the fundamental doctrines were attacked by modernism and belief. You keep silence. No. We must fight against this false teaching to depend Christianity. If there was no attack to Christianity from modernism, fundamentalism might not be appeared in history. Fundamentalism still should be called as a reformed theology or Calvinism. But modernists appear, they attack the Christianity uh, against this modernism, the Christianity acted 
against the modernism. We call this movement fundamentalism or fundamentalist. They were fighting. We love the peace. We want to be a peacemaker. But that time, what is true peace, genuine peace? Without the truth, it's not the love. It's a blind love. We have to love someone with the truth in the Bible. This is true love. Someone is dying, he is going to hell. We love him. How can we help him? Just, uh, I love you very much. Okay, what do you need? Okay, you need the water. Here is the water. You need uh, food. Okay, here is the food. You need the money. Okay, I can give you. I love you. Finally, you never give, that, give him the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is going to hell 100% sure. Is it true love? If you love this man, you must give him the gospel message. You must help him escape from sin. Help him with the truth. Without truth, it's not the love. You are helping him to go hell. So, someone attacks the fundamental doctrines in the Bible. The, he attacks the cross of Jesus Christ. How can we do? We have to depend ourselves. We have to fight against these all false doctrines, false teachers. Fundamentalism was a reaction against modernism. Whether they are fundamentalist or modernist, both say that fundamentalism is virtually synonymous with orthodox Christianity. Not a than Christianity itself. I am a fundamentalist. I believe in that Jesus Christ. Who Jesus Christ is, what he has done for me on the cross, shedding his precious blood. I believe that. I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a fundamentalist. Same with the apostolic faith. I preach the same truth from the Bible. I'm also preaching the, all the lessons from the apostles. I'm walking on in, walking on via Antiqua, all the path. Fundamentalism has emphasized that fundamentalism is nothing new, rather something extended from old faith, on which their forefathers of faith was holding fast. For fundamentalist, fundamentalism identify the original Christian faith based on the word of God. So, uh, Reverend Dr. Park Hyung Yong, uh, he's not my father, but he's same surname with me. He said, fundamental means mere orthodoxy or orthodox Christianity. Furthermore, since fundamentalism identify orthodox faith, which hold fast and believe on the traditional and historical faith, the original Christianity, it is very just that the fundamentalism is Christianity itself. Yes! It is true that fundamentalism is Christianity itself. He graduated from Old Princeton Theological Seminary. 
He was the senior of Carl McIntyre in Princeton Theological Seminary. He has good relationship with uh, Carl McIntyre, and he had a very sound mind about the fundamentalism. So many Korean pastors, they attack the fundamentalism, but he depend the fundamentalism. And he said, fundamentalism is Christianity itself. I agree 100% with the word uh, Dr. Park Hyung-yong. Uh, he was very famous theologian in Korea. Now the, the biggest theological seminary is the Chongshin uh, Theological Seminary. He was the principal of the Chongshin Theological Seminary. But now Chongshin Theological Seminary is becoming a new evangelicals. Uh, last semester, my uh, senior, a uh, junior, the Kong, he graduated from Faison Bible College. Um, he said to me, uh, one professor, he was teaching uh, criticism in Chongqing University. Of course, now the Chongqing University, he cannot. Uh, allow him to teach the criti criticism in the seminary. But he was very worried because the more and more the liberal and new evangelicals come in the Chongqing University. In the Korea, not much the fundamental um, seminary. So pray for the Korean brethren. Uh, but though modernists agree the orthodoxy of fundamentalism and the importance of the orthodoxy by which Christianity should be defined, they think that Christianity should be adjusted according to modern world and redefined according to modern terms. Uh, they agree with us, okay, the fundamentalism has uh, some tradition of all the paths. Nevertheless, the, all the doctrines, all the some element of Christianity should be adjusted according to modern world and be defined according to modern term. What is the adjust and redefine? This is just uh, give up all the fundamental doctrines and just accept, embrace all the worldly thinking. Actually, the criticism is not the biblical way. It's come into the church from outside, from the world. Uh, they uh, never believe the uh, preservation of any books. Okay, so in history or in literature, they must criticize. It is real. Which word is real word? First time they studied, and they never believed the Bible is God's word. So they applied all this kind of rule to the Bible. This is criticism. This is not. Uh, self-generating theory in the church. This is come, come in from the world, worldly method. Can we apply this kind of uh, utility to criticize the Bible? They never believe in the authority of the Bible. They never believe in the bubble plenary preservation. Even today, they never believe in the bubble plenary inspiration. Uh, Kirso Blake, he is the liberalist modernist. He was a professor of New Testament exegesis and early Christian literature at the Leiden University, the oldest university in the Netherlands. 
Uh, he became a professor of Harvard Divinity School, and he was a lecturer in New Testament at Union Theological Seminary in New York. Uh, he was a liberal. Uh, he said, uh, it is mistake often made by educated person who happen to have but little knowledge of historical theology to suppose that fundamentalism is a new and strange from a thought. Who is the educated person? It, this is a modernist, liberalist. It means, uh, the conservative and fundamentalists are not educated people because they still hold fast the old path, old doctrines in the Bible. But the well-educated men must be the liberals and modernists. Okay? But the modernists, they have some mistake in knowledge about the fundamentalism, okay? He said, it is nothing of the kind, it is the partial and uneducated survival of a theology which was once universally held by all Christians. It means they are not new, they are one part of all the faith. They still hold fast all the doctrine in the Bible in ancient age and middle age. They still hold fast. This is fundamentally. They are not un, they are uneducated survival of a theology they have. Eh? How many were there, for instance, in Christian churches in the 18th century who doubted the inspiration of all scripture? A few, perhaps, but very few. It means, until the 18th century, all Christianity, all Christians never, never has the doubt of the inspiration of all scripture. They believe the verbal plenary inspiration until 18th century. 100% sure. Maybe a few people, few people, very few people, they have some doubt, but they cannot pronounce from their mouth. Why? Every church, every Christian believed in verbal plenary inspiration. They believe that the Bible is God's word. Then how can they speak of the Bible is not God's word? Cannot. But how about today? Only a few people believed in that the Bible is God's word. How about the verbal plenary preservation? No verbal plenary preservation, no verbal plenary inspiration. In Korea, only four or five pastors believed in the verbal plenary preservation, including me. A few believe the Bible is inspired, the preserved by God. Now we are minority, okay? just 300 years. No, the fundamentalist may be wrong, I think that he is, but it is we who have departed from the tradition, not he, and I'm sorry for the fate of anyone who tries to argue with the fundamentalists on the basis of authority. The Bible and the corpse theologicum of the church is on the fundamentalist side. It means we are supported by traditions, we are supported by Bible, we are supported by the body of theology. But what is modernist? Modernist depart from traditions. They want to walking on via moderna. To be fundamentalist, 
To be fundamentalist imply being willing to fight for certain fundamental doctrines that liberals denied. Now liberals denied a lot of precious doctrines in the Bible. What can we do? Oh, it's okay. It's just uh, your opinion, but I hold past the fundamental doctrines. Okay, you go your way, I'll go my way. Don't fight, okay? This is not fundamentalist. Fundamentalist willingly to fight for certain fundamental doctrines. Someone uh, despise my father before me. What can I do? Oh, it's okay. So you what? Oh, I love my father. It's okay. Still, I love my father. Uh, you do anything you want. Speak anything you want. Is it correct attitude? I love your father. Are you honored your parents? I have to say something. No, you are wrong. My father is not like that. He is very good man. If you want to despise my father, please bring the evidence and I will apologize to you. But nothing wrong, you do not say that kind of things, right? This is the son's attitude. Now the liberals and the modernists, they attack all the authority of the Bible, they attack even God, they attack even Jesus Christ in the name Christianity. What can we do? Just keep silence? Want to be a peacemaker? This is not attitude of fundamental. This is the attitude of new evangelicals. Compromise. Don't do that. We are fundamentalists. Fight. Not fight with gun and sword. Fight with your sermon, with your writings, with your good attitude. Fundamentalists were distinguished from other Protestant conservatives by their willingness to fight for the fundamental doctrines of the Bible. And someone says, oh, I'm a conservative. Very conservative. Of course, they are believing in all the faithful doctrines, fundamental doctrines in the Bible. They were, they are born again Christians, but they never, never want to fight. Then they said, I am conservative. Of course, all the fundamentalists, they are conservative Christians, but one more. They want to fight against the modernism. Now, who is fighting against modernism? Is there any word from the conservative camp to attack the modernism and the liberalism? I never heard. They just say we are conservative Christians, okay? Uh, you do your own way, I'll do my own way. Let us not fight, okay? Uh, let us make the line. So don't cross over the line, okay? I want, this is our camp, this is your camp. If you attack us, we will <laughs> keep Silence. Because this is our attitude. We don't want to fight, okay? This is the, the attitude of so-called conservatives. But how about the fundamentalists? No. Don't do that. Okay? If you do this, we'll attack you. This is a more, uh, positive action, okay? The offensive action. Typically, they saw the world uh, through images of warfare. 
Okay, this is the field of spiritual battles. They are our enemies. Enemies come, attack. What can we do? We must fight against our enemies. Okay, this is a war field. Warfare. Battlefield. So, but it's not, actually this concept is the biblical concept because the, the apostle Paul said to his spiritual son, Timothy, we are called as a good soldier of gospel of Jesus Christ. Very good soldier. Must be well trained. And he must fight well in the battlefield. He couldn't fight. Useless, actually. Especially the pastors and preachers, church workers. You must know very well how to fight. You must protect your congregations. Someone in the church, they are teaching wrong doctrine from modernism and liberalism, from new evangelicals, what can you do? You must fight, point out them, you must do something. This is the attitude or mindset of fundamentalist. Do not escape the battle. You have, we have to fight the good fight for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Attacks of modernism. The modern thought has emphasized the importance of reason and the scientific method in the discovery of truth and has refused to be bound by traditions of the past. They always want to new things, but uh, in theology there is new things. There is no new things except the uh, heresy. Remember this. Uh, the Bible was written 3,500 years ago by Moses until uh, the... Revelation around the uh, 1 AD 100. It is uh, 1,900 years all uh, fulfilled, accomplished the Bible. There is no more revelation after uh, revelation. So this is quite old book, this Bible. Nevertheless, it's still we can apply all the lessons from this Bible. The way of salvation never changed. No more development. We just believe in the way of salvation in the Bible. But the modernists said, no, 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 this, uh, we have to free from this limitation by traditions of the past. This is a modernized thinking, so be careful. The rationalistic school of philosophers has exalted man's ability to discover truth by reason without recourse of revelation. Okay, the, now the wrong revelation comes from two ways. By liberals, they said we are using the reason so we can find God by our reasoning. This is another way. So another revelation. But the Lord already gave us His special Revelation to us, the Bible. They just believe in the Bible and they have to reason to uh, interpret correctly, but they deny the authority of, of the Bible. They are not believing in the Bible, but they just, just use the reason. 
But human being is not perfect. Also, reason is not perfect. Reason also uh, influenced by the sin. So sometimes the reasoning cannot work properly. We'll make the mistake. If we are, our reason is perfect, but also the sub, uh, object, the creature, also influenced by sin. They are, the creature also are waiting for their salvation. So object and subject, both are not perfect. How can you get the perfect revelation? So no more revelation, but the modernists, they still believe the power of reason. But another way of salvation today by the charismatics, uh, they pray hard and they are sleeping. Sometimes they have new revelations, but I believe there is no revelation. This is all deception. Or uh, making by themselves. Sometimes the human being uh, is deceived by himself. Remember this. So we have 100% perfect God's word, perfect revelation in our hand. Just believe in, uh, just get the salvation from the Bible. Okay, let me introduce uh, Rin Descartes. Uh, he said, Kokito ergo sum. It means, I think, therefore I am. He developed a philosophy in which his starting point was thought of everything except his own consciousness and his ability to think. Is it true? I don't agree with him. I introduce you one more word, credo ergo sum. It means I believe, therefore I am. This is uh, the attitude of Christians. Where can we get all the knowledge? How can you know who God is? Can you see the stars and moon and sun and trees and birds? Can you see God? Of course, I believe that we call this natural revelation but not perfect. We just can see the shadow of God, the skills, the power of creation, okay? But not perfect. From, for, uh, from mountain, from sky, from the ocean, we cannot get the knowledge of salvation. So for the elect, God gave his special revelation so we can get all the knowledge about God, Christ, salvation, even the knowledge about the Bible we can get from the God's Word, the Bible. So if we believe in the Bible, we can get the, all the knowledge. So I say to you, credo ergo sum. I believe, therefore I am. No belief, we are nothing. Okay, influence of enlightenment, uh, I already uh, told you the first German rationalism and French naturalism and English deism. The all three uh, the thought together we call this uh, Primitive liberalism, but it was developed uh, after American Civil War. It appears three types: the first, Darwinian evolutionism, and second, comparative religion, third, higher criticism. We call these 
modernizing liberalism. Uh, the short form is modernism. Okay. So now in Darwinian revolutionism, it influenced every area in the society. In, even the, in the area in religion, in Christianity. So many people uh, accept this evolution theory. So they said the Christianity also uh, evaluated from the primitive religion until very systematized religion. This is Christianity. Developed not by revelation. Is limited by human culture. By time, it was well developed. This is modernized thinking. Okay, or comparative religion. Comparative religion means that there is no absolute religion for salvation. All comparative religion. Uh, someone is more. Uh, someone. Some religion is easier to go heaven, so some, some religion uh, harder than the other religion. But finally, they can reach the truth. This is comparison, comparative religion. So we just uh, respect each other, and let's talk about the way of salvation, and let's go together. Nothing different, okay? This, the result of comparative religion is the WCC, World Council of Ch Churches. What a higher criticism. A criticism, it is, uh, they criticize the authority of the Bible. Okay, this is a higher creed. They want to destroy the Bible because Bible is the foundation of the Christianity. Christianity is uh, the religion of the book, the Bible. So no Bible, no Christianity. So destroy the, the authority of the Bible, no Christianity. So now all the liberal church, modern Modernized church, they do not believe the Bible is the God's word. So they have some freedom to say anything. They have the freedom to think anything. They have the freedom to live according to their own standards. Okay, this is, comes from higher criticism. Okay, Charles Darwin. Evolution attacked the biblical account of creation as well as bringing into question the depravity of man and the significance of the work of Christ. So the Bible uh, starts with the word of creation. Let's see Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The Bible starts with the creation record. Also, Bible says about God. Now, the evolutionism said, No, no, there was no creation by God. Every creature comes up from Evolution. It means he denied the first birth in the Bible. If we cannot believe the first birth in the Bible, how can we believe the other part of the Bible? Is it? Also, he has uh, some question the depravity of man. Uh, the animals, uh, dogs, they cannot have the sin, you know? There is something wrong, we never say you, uh, you commit sin, you, we never say. Even though the dogs cannot have any good things in spirit spiritually, uh, in Tanzania, the Bible culture of East Africa has uh, the early morning prayer. 
and dogs always beside uh, me, they spend the time with me, uh, 30 minutes to one hour every day. They love me very much. But after three years, five years, ten years, they don't have any spirituality. They never go out and evangelize the other dogs and the build the church building. They never worship because they are dogs. But the Darwin said we are one kind of animal. Okay? Chimpanzee, the orangutan, gorilla, they are our relative. The animals has no sin. How can you say the human being has sin? Because they do not believe in the, the all the record of the Bible. We are created in image of God, but they do not believe it. The evolution says we come out from the same kind of animals. Okay. So they question the depravity of man. There's no poor. No depravity of man. There's no sin. This is Darwinism, evolutionism. Of course, no sin. How about the death of Jesus Christ? What for? Jesus Christ, he died on the, on the cross, shedding his precious blood to save us from our sin. But Darwin said, no sin, no sin, no. So it's useless of the death of Jesus Christ. This is the Darwinism attack, the foundation of Christianity. Okay? So we accept this evolutionism. We must give up all the fundamental doctrine in the Bible. The comparative religion attacked the uniqueness of Christianity as the way of salvation and the need for divine revelations. So the other religion also had their own book, the Quran and the, the books, some holy books in their own religions. And they search and they study this kind of good books, holy book, for them, they can find the salvation way. Don't say only Christian, Christianity has the way of salvation. We also have our own way. And let's see in the heaven, okay? This is comparative religion. So don't evangelize anyone. Uh, I know one pastor, uh, he uh, want to be a, a missionary. But he said um, he do not agree with uh, our mission policy. He said he has a new style mission policy. What's that? He said this is kenosis mission policy. Kenosis mean, comes from Philippians chapter 2. It means the empty. Okay? The Jesus Christ, he became man to save uh, the sinners, his people. Likewise, the missionary must be empty himself. He want to save Muslim. He must be a Muslim like Jesus. He must. He want to save the Hindu. He must be a Hindu. Not just outwardly, but inwardly from the heart. He must forsake all Christian doctrine, and he must be a Muslim. And Buddhist or Hinduist. This is the Kenosis mission policy. Sound good? Crazy. This comes comparative religion concept. The other religion has a, a salvation way. Why we evangelize them? Just 
become one of them and enjoy another way of salvation. This is Kenosis mission policy, mission theory. I'm not agree with this. The biblical criticism attacked the integrity and historicity of the scripture. So they uh, take out all the words from the Bible and change the letters and words according to their own thinking. They destroy the authority of the Bible. Hence, the focus of the assault was the authority and reliability of the Bible. The modernists think that the Bible is not the book of God's revelation, but the book of human experience in human history. Then the Bible has error inevitably. They do not believe in errors, uh, do not believe the inspiration by God, so they said this is just a record of the human experience in human history, like uh, the historical books in China or in Korea. Inevitably, it contains the errors, geographical errors, cost, uh, some ethical errors, every errors inside of the Bible, then how can we believe the Bible is no error, no mistake? This concept on the Bible all flew in England and Germany in 19th century, and it was spreading in the Bible colleges and seminaries in America, through whom studied in the universities there. So that time, the Bible college and seminary in America, the level is very low. So scholar, they study in Europe, especially in Germany and England. But Germany and England, all Bible college and seminaries influenced by liberalism and modernism. So automatically, they uh, learn all this kind of concept and they import this concept into America. So gradually, step by step, step the, all the Bible colleges influenced by the modernism and liberalism. So the modernists, they destroy the Bible college first. And uh, 30 years, 40 years, the graduate from the Bible college, they destroyed all the churches, denominations. So, uh, it's very, very sad story. The, all the Bible colleges in the United States of America, they start with a very, very conservative theology. Uh, they actually, they believe uh, what we are believing now, same thing. But by, because of the, this kind of modernism, the Bible college, they has forsaken all the fundamental doctrines. Eh? So reaction of fundamentalism in American Presbyterian Church. Of course, the American Presbyterian Church also attacked by modern so there are reactions of fundamentalists in American Presbyterian Church against the attack of modernists. Uh, in history of American Presbyterian Church has uh, three cases. The first case is the Charles August Briggs case. The second case Harley Prejob Smith case. The third, Arthur Cushman, Mackiepert case. The three case. Case means, uh, this is uh, like a trial, eh? So, denomination and church, uh, they examine their thinking and their teaching, their thought. 
Uh, this Charles August Briggs, highly preserved Smith, uh, Arthur, Arthur Cushman, MacPherson were all the professor in Bible college and seminaries. So they must be examined by denominations. So the denomination did something against them. The first man is Charles August Briggs. Uh, he was a native of New York City. Uh, he was a biblical scholar and Presbyterian minister, educated at the University of Virginia, graduated of the Union Theological Seminary, and studied at the University of Berlin. Uh, you must know the Union Theological Seminary. This uh, seminary was uh, one of the uh, Presbyterian Ministers. It means the Union Theological Seminary was educating the candidate of the Minister of Presbyterian Church. But later, this Union Theological Seminary became the Liberal Seminary. He graduated from Union Theological Seminary and also he studied at the University of Berlin in Germany. He learned a lot of liberal theology, liberal thinkings. He imported these two into the America. Uh, Charles August Briggs, uh, he published one book. This is a Hebrew and English lexicon of the Old Testament, as known as Brown Dry Bricks, or BDB. From the name of its three authors is a standard reference for Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic, first published in 1906. Uh, until today, even Firestone Bible College is using this DVD. But remember, this book was written by liberals. But today, we cannot find any book instead of this book. So we have to use this book to understand God's Word. But I recommend you... If you want to be a good scholar of the God's world, you have to do something. This is uh, fighting against the liberals. I encourage you, if you possible, please make new Hebrew lexicon with the conservative theology. Okay? This is one, 1906, over 100 years, but the, the, our fundamental camp never have any reference, any utility to understand God's word. It, this is very shameful. I already made uh, the parsing guide and uh, declension guide for Textus Receptus. Uh, this is your turn. Please make new Hebrew and English lexicon for all of the Old Testament. But I, I believe it's not over 10 years, okay? Because you have uh, the computer and all the utility to study the Hebrew, you can do it. So pray if you have a zeal for the Lord, and you have to start to make the Hebrew and English lexicon of the Old Testament. It is very, very precious work. The liberals, they made this BDB. Now you are trained very well on the very good teachers. You have uh, ability to do this one. Please, do not hesitate. It is uh, organized by alphabetical order of three uh, letter roots. 
of Hebrew. It was based on the Hebrew-German lexicon of uh, Wilhelm Gassenius, translated by Edward Robbins. So you can find the book of Gassenius, and you can see the Gassenius book, and from this book you can start the making this lexicon. Okay, I encourage you. Charles August Briggs. He was a good scholar, but he was the modernist. It's very sad. And uh, throughout the 1880s, Briggs published works that uh, championed the higher critical method and question the orthodoxy of Princeton theology. A strong opposition to his position had been rising in the church, but it was Briggs in Agrol addressed the authority of the authority of Holy Scripture, 1891, delivered upon his induction into the chair of biblical studies at Union, the precip precipitated one of the most famous heresy trials in American religious history. Here he became the professor of Union Theological Seminary. Later, one Chinese man studied in the Union Theological Seminary. But he cannot learn anything from the Union Theological Seminary. And he uh, returned back to China. Uh, he had he had a PhD degree. His name was John Sung, the teacher of Reverend Doctor Timothy Tong. If you want to uh, more want to know more about the Union Theological Seminary, read the book written by Doctor Timothy Tong, John Sung, my teacher. Uh, you can know what was, what the uh, Union Theological Seminary was. Okay? The Briggs, he was a good Hebrew scholar, but he became the professor of Union Theological Seminary, and he was the champion the, of the higher critical method. He applied all these kind of things. He destroyed the authority of the Bible. Of course, he said, he addressed the authority of the, of Holy Scripture, but he never depend the, the authority of Holy Scripture. Rather, he destroyed the authority of Holy Scripture. This is the, uh, heretical idea from him. His address shocked even more of his own uh, sympathizers by his uh, blatant attacks on the Bible. He en enumerated six barriers that allegedly impeded men in their Bible study. He said, to understand the Bible correctly, uh, the limitations. So, there was there were limitations. There were some uh, stumbling block, stumbling blocks. He called these six barriers. What is six barriers? Superstition, which he called. Bibliolatry, bibliotry. So we believe in the Bible is God's word. This, he said, uh, this kind of belief is the one kind of idolatry. We make the Bible as a idol. He said, this is a superstition. Second, the verbal inspiration. 
He said this is another barrier, the third authenticity of scripture. The fourth, inerrancy. The fifth, miracles. And sixth, predictive prophecy. This is the six barriers to uh, if we if we this kind of the barriers we cannot understand the Bible correctly. Okay, we do not believe in that the Bible is God's word. We are not believing in the Bible inspiration. And we are not believing in the authenticity of the scripture. We are not believing in the inerrancy of the Bible. We are not believing in the miracles and prophecy. What we can believe in the Bible? Nothing. Bricks for an hour and three quarters attack the belief in the bubble inspiration, scorn the Bible's authenticity and inerrance, loved and uh, revealed miracles and Old Testament ethics, deny the orthodox view of original sin and advocated the progressive sanctification after death. Is a biblical belief? No. Maybe this is, looks like Roman Catholic belief. Roman Catholic Church. What is the progressive sanctification after death? It's purgatory, right? He depart from all the truth from the Bible. Now he is teaching about the dark theory of purgatory. Understandably, conservatives immediately charged the professor with heresy. During the same year, the New York Presbytery, in the interest of peace, dismissed all charges against Briggs. Because this New York City, we already know, was controlled by liberals. Some of them agree with the BRICS. So they uh, said, of course, we, the peace is more important than the doctrine. So they dismissed all the charges against the BRICS. Because the BRICS, he belonged to the Presbytery of New York. The charges then reached the General Assembly, which ordered the Presbytery to try the case. So the charges, they appeal to the General Assembly, higher authority than the Presbytery. So General Assembly ordered the Presbytery to try the Briggs case. So, 1892, more of the assembly issued Portland Deliverance, an official proclamation that all ministerial candidates must affirm belief in the inerrance of the original manuscripts of scripture that this had been the church's historic position. And that if uh, a presbyter, presbytery discovered any of its uh, ministers teaching otherwise, it should charge them with violation of their ordination vows. Okay? So they cannot teach the liberal thought, liberal theology, and they must agree with the fundamental doctrine in the Bible. In 19, 1893, the prosecution committee uh, pressed eight specific charges against the Brixt, but the New York Presbytery acted. The prosecution committee then 
filed an appeal directly to the General Assembly, which finally decided to hear the case. The New York Presbytery want to protect the bricks because they, some of them, uh, definitely has same mindset with the bricks. The Briggs was convicted by a vote of 383 to 116 and suspended from the Presbyterian ministry because he do not believe the fundamental doctrine in the Bible and he did not agree with the confession, Westminster Confession of Faith and Short Catechism and Ladder Catechism. He cannot be a Presbyterian minister. Although Briggs received reordination into the uh, Protestant Episcopal Church in 1898, he remained at Union Theological Seminary and continued to train clergymen for Presbyterian pulpits. Uh, he was no longer, no longer the Presbyterian minister and suspended, so he moved to the Protestant Episcopal Church. Reordained. He is not Presbyterian minister anymore, but he was still teaching the student Presbyterian uh, minister, candidate ministers, uh, in at the Union Theological Seminary. So Union Theological Seminary continually um, educated the student uh, with the liberal and modernistic theology. That's uh, ridiculous. Okay. So later, Union Theological Seminary was a terrible, became terrible liberal uh, seminary. Dr. William Branton Green Jr. wrote in quite up, up, opposite, opposite uh, vein against what he called broad churchism. What is broad churchism? Uh, the Bible said, we have to walk in the narrow way, straight, okay? But uh, this time, the church has uh, the broad way. They were walking in the broadening way. We call this broad churchism. Broad churchism accepts everything, okay? This is broad churchism and broadening way. But the Bible uh, teaches us uh, go in narrow way, right? 